It's Marianne from Thrive and welcome to my channel. Have you ever had someone skip past a whole section of form that you've put in just because they don't think it applies to them? Or maybe you've wished that you could adapt your survey so that you could send people down particular paths and avoid all of that extra stuff that you may not need to ask them based on their responses. This is what branching does in Microsoft Forms. It allows you to customize the form experience, making it more streamlined and efficient based on the responses people give. So today I'm gonna to walk you through how you can set up branching at a very simple level to take what could potentially be three separate forms and build them all into one so that you can send out one link and work far more efficiently and make it easier for the people who are Now before we responding. actually get hands-on in a form on the screen, I wanted to talk a little bit about what it is and why it is so powerful. So it lets you, like I said, control which questions appear based on the choice or the answer someone has given in a previous question. And what that means is that instead of that one size fits all solution, we can customize the experience and remove anything that is irrelevant and reduce the frustration and overwhelm for people filling in your form from thinking that, well, that's not relevant, that's not relevant, I have to put not applicable or nothing or nil, and it's frustrating and it's time wasting. So we can make the experience tailored, but also more streamlined. So in terms of some real world examples, if you work in HR and you're sending out things like employee feedback forms or um, employee surveys, the branching could show different questions for managers versus general team members versus board members versus people who have access to certain information and not others. Okay, so say finance information and confidential information and people who don't. If we're talking about it from an IT perspective, if you use a form to log or lodge tech requests from staff or from your, your customers, branching can let you send people to a, a section of your form that shows them the troubleshooting tips or some sort of first steps or things that they need to make sure they've tried before they hit submit. And that could be specific to the hardware that they're using, the location they're in, or the software that their inquiry is about. And then a really great one is events. So presenters and speakers may have different follow-up or different additional information they need to provide when they're registering or confirming. Um, if you've got a presenter, if it's a, there's a dinner and there might be a meal provided versus just needing dietary requirements, there might be um, AV requirements versus accommodation or access that you may need to provide and get additional additional info on a speaker as opposed to an attendee. One form can do all of that. So now that we understand that branching can help us collate a lot of information in a much better way, let's jump in and create a form together and test it out and see how it looks. So the first thing that we need to do is create our form and this form is going to be used, I've created one here, it might be a department feedback survey. I'm going to walk you through how we're going to create that. So we've gone to cloud.microsoft or office.com in our web browser and headed to forms in our web app. You can see what I've done here. I've created this form. So we're going to start with a question, what department do you work in? And this is a multiple choice or a choice question, and I've got finance, HR, and IT. You would put whatever departments that you have here. I've then got another question that is a text question, and I've ticked long answer here. And this is, what is your biggest challenge in HR? I've also got, got one that is, what is your biggest finance-related challenge, and what is your biggest tech issue? And then a last question, which is, would you like to be contacted for support? This question at the top about which department they work in is going to be our branching trigger. What this is gonna do is depending on which choice they give us here, we'll determine what question they see next. And that's purely because if I tick the finance one, I don't need to see about, I don't need to tell you about a ch my biggest challenge in HR. I also don't need to tell you about my biggest tech issue. I just wanna answer this biggest finance related challenge. Okay, so we've got an initial question and then we've got three independent follow-up questions based on the department that people are in. So to add the branching, what we do is we click on the question that is our trigger question. And from our three dots, the ellipsis down here, more settings, we go to add branching. What this does is it opens up the back end of the back end of the form and we're able to now build that path for people. So what we're gonna do is we're going to link 
the answer to the correct question. So when someone chooses finance, I can then tell the form what the person should see next. So I want them to go to, if they tick finance, I want them to go to what's your biggest finance related challenge. Likewise in HR. So it will take them, the standard result is to take them to the next question. So if I clicked finance and I didn't have branching, it would go to the next question, which is number two, which is pointless. So we're going to jump ahead. And then here for IT, we're going to jump to what's your biggest tech issue. Now, that's all well and good. But if I fill in this question and I now don't put additional branching on, it will take them to the next question. So when they've completed their follow up, I need to tell each of these questions as well that they should go to the fifth question. So if I fill in finance, I will fill in question one, question three, and question five. I won't see questions two or four. Does that make sense? The idea here is to remove the things that someone would have to skip or potentially have to write something in that has absolutely no relevance. Once these are all in, and we may have other information that we'll add later, but once these are all in, we're going to go back and we're now going to go preview to test the form. This is how it will look for people. So we'll go click to start. And if I choose finance, you can see the questions come up as one, two and three, but it's finance and would I like to be contacted? If I click HR, that changes. And if I click IT, that changes. So what this does is it allows me to ensure that we've created the, the obvious, the sensible and the streamlined flow for the person based on their responses to question one. And just like that, we have created a branched form, which is smarter and easier for everyone to use. Now, before we close out, I wanted to share a couple of best practices for you. First thing is to keep it really simple. Overcomplicating your form with lots of different branches and multiple branching can get confusing. So keep it simple, plan everything out in advance, put all of your questions in and then figure out how the path works. But keep it simple where you can. Uh, test it before sharing. So always use that preview button to make sure that you can follow the flow and it's the correct sequence and you don't see anything that you shouldn't. Practice, practice, tweak share it out, okay? And then use it for the right scenarios. So it's great for feedback forms and um, customer surveys and support requests. But if you're only looking for a couple of very simple pieces of data, you may not need it. If your form is less than five or 10 questions, you may not need it at all. So just think about what is the most logical thing to do and what is going to make life easier for you and the respondents. If you found this video helpful, then please make sure that you give it a like and um, let me know in the comments how you are using forms in your workplace. If you are interested and would like early access to videos like this, then check out my Thrive Inner Circle YouTube membership. It gives you 48 hours access to the videos before they go live to the general public, along with a bunch of other perks. Um, just click the join button below to get started and check it all out. Thanks for watching today and I will see you again really soon.